everyone, welcome back to watch here and it's about time for another episode of Cyber Slayer. So it's been a while, it's been a while since I've read and it's been a while since I've uploaded Cyber Slayer. Yeah, I pretty much didn't have time to, to read this because of the other main contents on the channel and work and stuff. So yeah, anyway, now we're finally on stream, this is members stream by the way, so if you would like to join then feel free. You can like watch this recording live then and like discuss after the recording and stuff so yeah cool anyway i just go to the episode because last time we got like the first part basically of our like pretty much dead sister so yeah i wonder how this will go in the future so let's just go it seems like you like this uh series pretty well so yeah let's just continue and also seems like some of you prefer the original cgs like uh, og cgs for the game like the first version uh because of like there's like better emotions portrayed on them let me know in the comments what do you think did you like the og version better or this one anyway let's do it let's go load the save there we have it. This is a room forgotten by time. An exquisitely ca carved ro rosewood ti uh, tiger rose in soundless fury. And on the scrolls adorning the walls, hand painted dragons soar majestically through the sky. Even the faint light comes not from electric tubes, but from Buddhist lanterns burning uh, while oil. Uh, burning whale oil. Okay. I like how they mixing the... I don't know if like in the previous episodes it's been the case in the hotel. But in this case, like we have like tradition here, like traditional stuff. But also we have like elements of like sci-fi, like we have like some kind of like console or something. It's like attached to the bed. This is just, this is like perfect balance, basically. And with this music, I really enjoy it so far. From the furniture to the decorations, everything about the anarcho anachronistic bedchamber harkens back to the ancient imperial court. A night breeze from the far off Yaktse River blows in through the lattice window, but it carries only the smell of oil, smoke and rust, with no trace of a refreshing wind that sweeps across a wide Jingjian days long gone. Uh, one second, okay? Uh, I need to like change some option. One second. Mm. Actually, I don't have to. Okay, I felt like I have some like recording stuff, but okay, never mind. Never mind. <clears throat> oh, some old guy. In death, bad. Okay. Okay, this one, this CG is actually pretty good. I like this. I like the shading, like his look in the eye. Wow. On the canopy bed in the back of the room, the aged emperor lies near death. Li Tan Yuan. Now outlaw who hears his name can help but grow pale. For he is uh, the Zaizu, the overlord of the Qing Yun society. Oh, that's the society that's like associated with uh, um, Tao Luo, right? Forgot his... Oh, Kong. Yeah. The secretive order, whose name is carved in the history of Jingyan, and that is known and feared through the Asian underworld. Yet his, his power too is but the thing of the past. Shrunken and, emana, and emaciated, he is now nothing more than an old man waiting to die. Mechanical organ replacements have made it easy to extend one lifespan, but even now, it is not rare for the elderly to refuse augmentation, 
Oh. Okay. Through a, like, purist, we would call them, I guess, in society like that. I wonder, like... Yeah, it's, it's just his choice, yeah. Just, like, want to, like, move with the cycle of life and death, and not just, like, you know, extend his lifetime with, like, arguments and stuff, you know? Maybe he, like, uh, is afraid of, like, losing his humanity or something. Like, all of this stuff about, like, cybernetics in, like, stories, books, movies, this is a very, like, cool concept, you know? Like... There's like a lot of stuff that you can talk about with this. Lee is uh, of that kind, a member of the last generation that still resists the pressure to become cyborg. The desire to end his natural life without depending on inhuman devices has, alas, been ignored by the Lee doctors as attested uh, to be the veritable army of technology and crossing relentlessly upon, uh, upon his bedside. Oh, His life support system surrounds the bed, machines watching coldly as the life slowly fades from his body. Even the matted buzz of the cooling fans is enough to describe, uh, disturb the fragile peace of the room. Also, let me know in the comments what do you think about this, like, short episodes basically because i'm trying to do like 20 to maximum 30 minutes of the episode let me know what do you think about this formula do you like it like do you have like more time like watching this basically because like one hour episodes on like main series they sometimes feel too long but sometimes they feel okay by their existence alone the medical devices ruin the chamber's ancient elegance. Oh. The old emperor laments his inability to choose the manner of his own death. The foolish stubbornness of this old man still clanging to his heaven. Granted body would no doubt be quite amusing uh, amusing to today youth who readily swap even perfectly healthy organs for cybernetic upgrades. Yeah. He's like one of the last You cannot like fight basically the progress. Sooner or later there's only going to be more and more like technology around basically. You can do anything about this. You can like Try to ignore that, but it's still going to be like ahead of time all the time. For his part, however, Lei cannot bring himself to forgive those who think nothing of tearing down the boundary between man and machine. Not satisfied with mechanizing their limbs and organs, these creatures fill even their brains with semiconductors and wires. Their bodies are terrifyingly enough. But uh, it is the mentality that makes such things acceptable that Lee finds most chilling. Are the men are are the men uh, or are they men or are they machines? Where do they believe their souls to reside? Wow. And he is the worst of them all. Oh. Maybe next shogun. Uh. Was it Shogun? Someone high. I think I think Shogun. Not sure who is in China in that time. I I think it was Shogun here. Because this is happening in China, right? The silence of the room is shattered by the sound of feet approaching down the hallway at a brisk pace. The arrogance of the footsteps is as plain as day. For their unbashed declaration of confidence that none may impede them and the demand that all take heed and step aside. Lee knows their master well. Oh, okay. Fancy guy. The man is uh, Liu Haojun. 
stops sharply at the head of the lily pad and makes the formal hand in palm bow with a uh, faint reverence. Okay. This guy looks like he can like... Poison the previous head to be the head, basically. He looks like a backstabber. Does he look like backstabber to you? Let me know in the comments. I get like instantly vibes like that from him. Just because like, look at how, how he, he, like, his eyes. He just looks like, finally, finally we're going to kick out the, kick the bucket. It's not really sound like this. Cool jacket though. Cool suit. The red thing? Oh. Oh! Oh! Oh, okay, this guy is bad guy. Yeah, definitely. The voice actor. Oh god, I love this guy. Oh god, yes. Wow. Okay, I did not expect that. <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> Please make him like bad, like main bad guy or something. I swear. The man is wearing the last, uh, latest fashion from Hong Kong. A beautiful sink, Chang Shang, and embodiment with dragons. This, uh, that sounds grand noise, clothing. Does uh, not seem all that pretentious. Uh, as due perhaps to the fi finances of the features and to the class that he excludes from every pore. Yet although he appeared to be a perfectly normal human, there in fact remains none of the, his original body, save the brain and spinal column. By the way, I didn't ask you, but do you recognize his voice? Let me know if you recognize his voice. I instantly knew. I instantly knew and got like character in my in my head. Wow. Let me know in the comments. Did you pick it up as well? Mm. He appears of a perfectly normal human. There, in fact, remains none of his original body, save brain and spinal column. Okay, so he's like fully cybernetics. A cyborg that is indistinguishable from the flesh and blood man. To Lee, this is far more loathsome than a body intended to display its machinal nature. And as for the man's heart, Lee can't imagine that there could be a warm blood pumping through his veins. Yeah. Although the man appears too young to be the society's second in command of Fu Zaisku, his regal uh, bearing is more than sufficient to the post. To stand before the Zaisu uh, with such fearlessness was take a truly great man or an utter fool. Oh, yeah, that's The voice. His words are the epitome of courtesy, but there is no respect in the way of uh, way in his composed voice. In fact, one can even catch a glimpse of an amusement. As though he's looking down with scorn at a leap, uh, Lee's uh, withered, but re uh, ridden body. Lee's rasping voice is cold and sharp. Though at the door, he still the Zaisu, and no, uh, not one to brook the insolence of youth. King and Usurper, their battle is far past stage of subterfuge. 
He didn't be behind a veneer of mutual respect. Alas, the victor has long been decided. Mm. I think my chat works. Yeah, chat should work. For all the virtue of the righteous man, the final judgment shall always be rendered by the merciless flow of time. Well, that's a flow in this logic, because clearly for this guy there's nothing like flow of time. Thus, the one makes no attempt to mask his hate, uh, hatred and rage. Ooh, that was nice. Oh. While the other accepts them with this uh, disdain, knowing their importance. This meeting is no different, save only for. Okay, they. So he also know Tao Luo. Okay. Okay, maybe maybe they're like. So maybe he's not a bad guy. I mean, he really looks like a bad guy. Like these eyes are so mischievous, and the voice. It's perfectly fitting, like this voice actor is perfectly fit for like mischievous characters. Maybe he's he's definitely like pretending to be a friend and then he will like backstab Tao Lu or something. Like I swear, he have like some like weird plan. Maybe he just want to be next Shogun, but maybe not. Maybe maybe he have like some other like plan that's we still don't know. Maybe. I can't be sure. For now, I will just say like he just want to be like next, next shogun or like next leader basically of the Zhang, of this society. And maybe he is like acting friendly with Tao Luo as well. May he act friendly with everyone basically, just to get a position, but. Let's see, we'll see in the future. Hard to hard to tell what's like his like ultimate goal is basically. But definitely nothing good. Liu uh sudden statement. A keen light enters the old man's sunken eyes. Oh, oh. Tower Oh! Oh! The guy in the hotel was like, he's... His guy, okay. So, do you also possess one of the pieces? Taolu don't know about this, perhaps? It's possible. Magiremonakushidensho. みちがえようはありません。一年前、奴はマカオで死んだと。オッケー。そう告げたのは貴様だったか。面目次第もありません。奴の命運は。でもない。貴様の祈願を持ってしても見抜けなんだか。いや。いや、very yeah, good. So yeah, he's basically happy that not all the cybernetics are perfect. Interesting. So he can like see future to some degree, it seems. Lee crackles with undistinguished malice, then spears Liu with a piercing glare. <laughs> Okay, so we already have the point of like betrayal, so he betrayed his own guy in the past as well. Great. So already material for the betrayal. Okay, never mind. Lee ignores the hollow admonition, his voice growing in strength as he continues. Okay, 
コンタオロは戻ってきたあやつこそは真の君婦これぞ天の采配と言わずして何たるかあっウェイトケイアイアイブレッドロングリーアクシュリーアイフォンタクタオロウォーケンバックヒール As like you know from like journey and he's like visiting the shogun now but that's not the thing he, uh, they mean like he came back that he became active again that's why he's like uh, the lightning palm like the is unmistakable so it must be kong and stuff like this okay i i mistaken the plot here So Kong was also betrayed by this guy. And Shogun is admiring him basically. For being able to survive. Okay, so they are not exactly friends. You make yourself sound like a villain, I swear. Shigaru to a iwa sanzo. Kigan reijin. Kisama no shintan wa. Sono kara da to onaji. Sugata kataji wakari hito o yosu otte. Hito kawa muke wa. The direct insult finally draws a clear expression. From Leo, no anger, however, not a cold, pitying smile. Uh, let me change my settings really quick. Oh god damn it! I forgot this is terrible. Uh, either with voice in advance, pause on chapter end. Okay, I need to do second. Interrupt on advance. Okay. Yeah, should be fine. Anata to Anata no Hokai no Tamini. Funko Sai Shin Stikita Kohai ni. Zeeven nao kotoba desu me. I'm a little bit confused, to be honest. Like, you can, like, clarify to me in the comments, I guess. If I don't, uh, like, get full picture of this conversation because Kong is like associated with like this society that they are in but they also talk like this guy betrayed Kong so they should be enemies but also Shogun seems to respect him is he with them or not? I might like get lost somewhere in this. Tawaki. Even on his deathbed, news of Shanghai reaches Li's ears. He knows the society reputation for heroism and virtue has become but a distant memory. Well. Not the best state of the society that you lead. Right before you left, huh? Shingai desu na. Watashi wa ima to yu jidai ni sotte. Soshiki o sashin shite kita dake no koto. Furui jidai ni ikita katagata ni wa. Oki ni mesanai katachi datta yo desu ga. Kisama wa. ギキョの精神を根絶やしにした。先代が飛び散っちかってきた全てを落としめた。秋の技に人は降雪されと我らが崩壊を飽きらせつの巣にしよって。秋ですかこの私が。Do you sighs and looks up, his gaze wandering through the air, hunting Allah until uh, aligning 
upon the security camera tucked to the corner of the ceiling. Oh? Lee, however, cannot see the uh, fleeting glance that he shoots towards the lens. Leo's voice is different now, a little lower, a little more subdued than before, but even that slight change is enough to mark the sudden absence in his voice, in his tone, of something absolutely essential. Yeah, like right now. Yeah, let me guess, you will kill him, huh? Like right now, you're smiling as a cold, twisted smile, paying no heed to the rage to the reddens Lee's wrinkled features. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Dead. But Lee Tan Yuan leaves the war before he can finish, never knowing that it was it was that cut what it was that cut off his final words okay so now this is getting like kind of complicated i think like it depends if i understand this correctly so kong can at this point kong can like be actually associated with these guys or he might be like faking that basically with the seal he, he somehow faked that in the hotel but if he's with them then he, as like an augmented human and stuff, he had probably very good like uh, connection to the old Shogun basically. But right now the ruler changes. So what will happen now? Will he still be able to get the support or not? Um, this is very drastic change, actually, from someone who. Like, so is it from like old generation without like any technology and stuff to like extremely cybernetic one? Hmm. A swift death with no time to feel pain. Whatever the killer, killer's intent, the method uh, used was merciful. Lay's doctor burst into the bedchamber a few minutes later, raped from his slumber by the alarm of uh, his patients monitoring devices. Well, kinda too late. Uh, it's not a natural cause. A vast array of the alert noises is issuing for, uh, from the life support machines, forming a discordant orchestra around the Zyxus bed. A bed. And beside them stands none other than Liu Hajun. The society's second in command, whose martial name is Demon Eyed Adonis. What could he be doing in the Zyxu room at this hour? But one glance from Liu Frozen Eyes cast all suspicion out of the doctor's mind. No one fall under the gaze can help but feel this pressure, as though the slightest misstep could cost one's life. Oh, yeah! Definitely. Leo turns uh, back to the bed. His chiseled features set in expressionless mask. Relief at being freed from his stir lasts only a moment. The doctor realizes that the old master is clearly dead. He finds himself on again in the brink of hysteria. Yeah, I'm more afraid of like my life right now. Ryoban contrast is utterly unperturbed. In it's his unshakable calm in the face. It's his unshakable claim uh, in the calm in the face of such catastrophe, a sign that he is indeed fit to be the next leader. 
Or is it simple helplessness? Okay. Leo unsermedly pulls the sheets down, revealing the corpse's chest. On top of the old master painfully visible ribs, the ghastly black bruise in the shape of a hand. Okay. ただの一撃でご増ロップがことごとく破裂しているこの証拠まさしく国主列心派大天竜の内向商法に違いないオッケーイズアンシャワードラスクールオフライクコンクフォーアイゲスブラックハンドオブデストラクション Leo's diagnosis is based on his experience as a martial artist. The doctor to whom such things are foreign is unable to object. Yeah. この場の采配は貴様に一任する。報告はすべて私に直々に。Doctor nods rapidly in acknowledgement of Lee's order, handed down as uh, it is with such a resolve. The Fu Zhang Su rationality alone is keeping him from the complete nervous uh, breakdown. You can only thank heaven that a capable leader happens to be a present at the site of this calamity. Before leaving the, the doctor to his duties, Leo glances once more at the security camera on the ceiling, whose electric eye has observed the secret deed that transpired here. Sole witness to his crime, the lens glitters as it fixes, fixes Leo with the emotional stare. <laughs> his stately stride on by uh, Anna Bait. Wait, what? His stately stride, Anna. Baited. Okay. What kind of word are these? Ryu leaves the room. Now, the Emperor's tomb behind him. Hmm. Maybe I should put that into one episode?